Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I've got five high-end DIYs for you on a budget. If you want to know how to bake them, stick around. I'll show you how. And be sure and hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching. Okay, for this first one, I had these light fixture covers. You can get these just about any Lowe's, Home Depot, or even um, Michael's carries them. I'm just going to bend the tabs in so that um, I can stick this down into a flower pot. So I'm trying to make it completely round, and I'm trying to not um, bend up my metal so bad, so I'm using a towel over the top of it. Just kind of protect it as I'm bending it. Okay, then I'm just going to set this down into a, like a 2-inch flower pot, and I'm just going to glue it in with some hot glue and some E6000 glue. And then to make it stay a little bit better, I'm going to add two corks and I'm going to glue the cork to the metal piece and then to the bottom of the flower pot as well. And this will just secure it a little bit heavier. And then I'm just going to glue the bottom of this to the, the four inch wooden disc. And then I'm going to take them outside and I'm going to spray paint them with a matte black paint. And I'm also going to spray two little finials to go on top of my lid here when I get um, ready to put all this together. Okay, then for my lids, I'm going to take two four-inch rounds and two five-inch rounds. And I'm going to paint those with um, Folk Art Barcelona Beige Chalk Paint. And next, I'm taking the Magnolia Home Aged Wax. And I'm just going to kind of age these up a little bit. And I'm just going to take a... a um, cloth towel and I'm just going to kind of just distress them in the middle a little bit and then I'm going to go around the edges to kind of get them a little bit more distressed just to kind of give it an aged look and this wax really does work good I've used it on several projects and um, that I haven't videoed but it does work really well just kind of really get it blended in good just kind of take some time on that if you're going to use this okay then I'm going to go ahead and glue my four inch on top of my five inch circle and just to say this um, now, I paint. I did not paint the underside of the one that I'm gluing it to. I would recommend doing that. And then I'm going to go ahead and glue my finial to the top. But go ahead and paint both sides of the bigger one. Because if you put it up on a shelf, you will see that you didn't paint it. And I didn't realize that till after the fact. And then now I'm just gluing in a little boxwood that I had, just a round boxwood. I'm just gluing it right in the bottom to kind of cover up all the bottom part of there where that cork is. And then I'm going to go ahead and put my top on top. And I'm just going to go ahead and add a little E6000 glue right around the top edge. And then I'm going to glue that on. And then I'm putting a little bit of hot glue on there just to kind of hold it in place while it dries. Just kind of line it up. Make sure you get it lined up good. Okay, those turned out really cute. You could even use these at Christmas time. Let me know in the comments which one's your favorite. Okay, this is a box that I got at um, Ikea, and I'm just going to paint it with Folk Art um, chalk paint and Barcelona beige, and I'm just going to use a um, chalk brush to do it, and I'm going to wear some gloves. Now, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take all my drawers out, and I'm going to turn them out the opposite way, because that's how I'm going to actually put them back in. Okay, and I'm going to paint all my drawers, and I'm going to paint the outside of the cabinet all the same color, and then I'm going to paint the front part of the cabinet as well. But again, I'm painting the back side of these drawers because I'm going to use those instead of the one that had the little U um, where you put your finger in and open up the doors. I'm adding my own hardware here in a little bit, but just get it all coated really well. And then I'm going to come back in with some sandpaper, and I'm going to lightly sand it. Just kind of knock off the um, anything that raised on it. And then I'm going to go ahead and take that same um, antique um, aged wax and I'm just going to kind of brush it onto it. I just want to give it a little bit of an aged look. And I did this on all the drawer fronts and the whole entire cabinet. Just kind of take your time on this if you are going to use this. The more that you blend it, the more that you rub on it, it'll get blended in really well. And it does give it a really nice aged look. And for my hardware, I'm going to use some cup washers. And then I'm going to use some of the library um, file frames. And then I didn't end up using those other things. But I'm just going to give these all a good coat with a matte black paint. And then I'm going to attach these legs to it. These are those um, hairpin legs. These are two inches. And I'm just going to go ahead and mark exactly where I need to um, put those. And then I'm going to attach these. 
This added a little bit extra to it because it does make it sit up off the counter a little bit and it uh, made it look a little bit um, more high end. And then I'm just going to attach these with some screws. Now these little legs, they come in a variety of different sizes and lengths. Um, this one here is a two inch, but you know, they really do make some furniture look nice and they are pretty you know, budget friendly. I'll give you the link for these in the description below. I bought these on Amazon. Okay, and I'm using the little file, um, the library file frames for my top three drawers. And then I'm going to put um, the cup washers, the cup um, handles on the other drawers. Just kind of get it measured out. And then I did have to use a drill to drill these out. So to get to make a starter on these. Just going to do a little pilot hole on both of them. It just makes it a little bit easier for your screw to go down into it especially when you're using small screws. And these came with some pretty small screws. Okay, then I'm just gonna go ahead and line up my cup washers on this one here. And I'm just gonna kind of make sure that they go in the center. Now that bottom drawer, it's only one drawer, but I am gonna put two cup washers on it to kind of make it look more uniform with this one. And that way I'm gonna make sure they line up with these as well. And then I did have to do a, um, pilot hole on these too because it was a little screw on these as well but i really think that those cup washers really do add um, to little pieces of furniture i really love the way this turned out now this little cabinet was only 28 dollars, but i think it really does look like a high-end piece let me know what you think in the comments below Okay, for this next one, I'm just going to use some white oven baked clay. And I got this at uh, Michael's. It's their Craft Smart brand. And I'm just going to run it through. If you have, if you're working with clay, invest in one of these pasta makers because it's really easy to get your clay to soften up if you run it through here first. It just makes it so much easier to, um, to ma it makes it more pliable. And it doesn't take a lot of effort to do that. And then I'm just going to roll it out and I'm going to roll it out into a ball and I'm going to cut it with a cookie cutter. And I think the cookie cutter that I use is about a five inch circle. Just kind of getting it till it's about maybe three eighths of an inch thick because I did want it a little bit thick. Just kind of rounding it out. And then I'm just going to cut it with that cookie cutter. And I'm going to make two of these. I'm going to make one large one and then I'm going to make one that's a little bit smaller. But just kind of get your uh, clay smoothed out pretty good and then I'm going to take an embossing folder and I'm going to emboss them. And then I'm going to take another cookie cutter here and I'm going to cut in the middle to make a circle. And that's probably about a one inch circle. Okay, then I'm going to take an embossing folder that has a wood grain to it, and I'm just going to press it right in the center to give this uh, wood grain look onto this circle. Just kind of push it in there, and you can get a nice effect on it. And then I'm going to take a um, quarter inch by six inch dowel stick. I sharpened one in, and I'm just going to stick it right through the center here. And I'm going to go up as far as I can go. And then I'm going to take it back out and I'm just, I'm going to bake it. So I'm just going to put it on some parchment paper and then I'm going to make another one exactly like that, but in a smaller version. And I'm going to bake those for 35 minutes at 275 degrees. I'm going to make the base for these. I'm taking a one and a quarter by one and a quarter by five inch piece of wood. And I'm just going to drill a hole in the center to put a dowel stick in to make these stand up. Okay, and I'm just taking a quarter inch drill pit and I'm just going to drill about halfway through this. Assemble these. I'm just using some E6000 glue. Now I made the stick for my um, larger circle um, a little bit taller than the short than the smaller circle. So they kind of, they're a little bit more staggered. But just kind of make sure you get it put in there pretty good. And try to make sure it's straight. OK, 
Okay, then I'm going to paint beat both of these with a dark um, chalk paint in a gray color. And I'm going to paint my stick as well. And then I'm just going to attach the top part with some E6000 glue as well. Just kind of make sure you get it pushed way up in there where you had put your stick originally before you baked it. And then I'm coming back in with a lighter gray chalk paint and I'm just going to kind of do some distressing on these. Just kind of to give it a little bit of depth. I really like the way these turned out. I like the texture of them and the geometric um, design of them. Let me know what you think. Okay, for this next one, I'm just taking an embroidery hoop and I'm separating it. And I'm just going to kind of run these at a diagonal, like at a cross. I'm going to put a little bit of E6000 glue and a little bit of hot glue to glue them together. Just kind of straighten them up so they're like an, like an X. And just put a little bit of glue there and a little bit of hot glue and then just lift it over to put it on there. And then I got a, an embroidery hoop just one size up from this and that's what we're going to run through the center after they're painted. Okay, I'm making two of these. I'm going to spray paint them with a matte black paint and then I'm going to spray my other two with a copper colored paint. I sprayed those in black and then I'm spraying these two in the copper and I'm going to spray the screw and everything. This was a nice two contrasting colors that went well together. Okay, to assemble them, I'm just going to go ahead and unscrew the loop, put it around the center part of this, and then I'm going to screw it back together. You do want to take it off of there though, so you can just kind of open it up really good, but then go ahead and screw it back together and screw it on there tight and that'll hold all that together. And then I'm going to attach the, the smaller one the same way. Okay, next I'm just going to take some black brads and I'm just going to clip off the end of them and just keep the top circle part of them. And I'm going to start gluing these on where the, um, where the copper um, loop connects to the black loop. You can put a little bit of dot of hot glue there and just put that on. Okay, I really like the way that those turned out. Let me know in the comments which one's your favorite. For this next one, I'm taking an inch and a quarter by 12 inch piece of wood. I'm taking two of them. I'm going to spray paint them with some matte black paint. Okay, next I'm taking a um, cabinet door that I got at Ikea. And I'm just going to make this a tray. I'm just going to put both of these on the bottom part here. And I'm not going to put them on the outside edge. But go ahead and mark exactly where you want to drill your holes. I am going to have to move them inward a little bit because I did have handles that conflicted with it. And then I'm going to match the dots on both of them so that they match. Okay, then I'm going to take a countersink bit and I'm going to drill my holes. It'll go down into the wood that way that your screw will not, it'll go into the wood, not outside the wood. And then drill all four of your holes. Okay, next I'm going to put it exactly where I want it and I'm going to drill a pilot hole to start for my screw. Now you've got to move over a little bit away from the edge because you are going to put a handle on the opposite side and you need room to do that. Just go down far enough to where you can start a pilot hole and do it on both sides and then we're just going to screw this right in. And I'm going to start my screws ahead of time so I can see exactly where they're coming out so I can match them up with the hole in the board. 
just kind of line them up right there and figure out exactly where they are and then just go ahead and screw them all the way down. And then do exactly the same thing for the opposite side. This was an easy way to make a tray and it's already covered. It's already pretty. The wood, you didn't have to do anything with the wood or have buy wood grain. And this door was only $11. I thought that was a pretty good buy for this. So my whole tray, including my handles, you know, was under $20. And this is a good size tray as well. Then I'm going to put my handles on the opposite side. I'm just measuring, make sure I'm getting them centered. And then I'm just going to mark with a pencil exactly where I'm going to drill my holes. But I'm just double checking pretty good just to make sure before I actually start drilling. And then I'm just going to attach these with some small screws. Okay, that was so easy and it turned out so pretty. You could style this so many different ways and it would also be great during the holidays. If you liked the video today, be sure and give me a thumbs up. And if you want to see future videos, be sure and subscribe and ring that bell to be notified when I have a new video upload. Thank you all so much for watching. I really appreciate it.